Welcome to the OM School program. This video is taken from our teacher training program on edX.org called Teaching with Physical Computing. Whether you're new to teaching computing or a specialist, this program will set you up on a path to becoming an expert in delivering technology-enabled project-based learning in the classroom. This module takes a step back and sets the scene for physical computing in the real world. Where it came from, where it's going, and why it's relevant to you. The Big Picture of Physical Computing over time, the physical structure of the computer has constantly evolved. It is now quite hard to define what a computer is. In the early days, the computer was a discrete electrical device that would carry out specific and local functions. In simple terms, numbers were put into the device. Following instructions programmed into the computer, a processor carried out computations on those numbers and produced an output for the user. An example would be a computer dedicated to calculating the payroll for a large company. Before computerization, accounts clerks would collect some numbers together such as the employees' names, the number of hours that they had worked during the week, their hourly rates of pay, and their tax codes. The increase in processing power of the computers of the future was predicted by Gordon Moore in 1965. Moore observed that the number of transistors on a computer chip was doubling about every 18 to 24 months. The connection of computers allowed them to start sharing the data. Firstly, in the form of local area networks, LANs, then wider area networks, and finally the global internet. Wi-Fi enables the sharing of data over a wide area without the need for a physical or wired connection via radio and microwaves. Towers like these, which receive and pass on the data, are becoming a common feature of the landscape. In the world of education, the term physical computing is now applied to what used to be known as control technology. It specifically refers to technologies which make use of sensors for the collection of data from the environment outside the system, such as temperature measurement. Control systems based on this pattern are known as Input Process Output IPO systems. In the classroom project work, an IPO system can be something as simple as making an LED light up when a light sensor is covered. When teaching about physical computing, there is every opportunity to take a constructivist approach. Begin by setting the context. When explaining the project to learners, an exciting hook to engage and enthuse them will help to sustain their interest for the longer term of the project. In keeping with the constructivist approach, the learner should be given sufficient time to investigate and experiment with a range of input and output components, thus constructing knowledge of the hardware and programming skills out of their experiences. Once they have learned how to write programs which collect data from input devices and control a range of outputs such as LEDs and buzzers they will be ready to design and build their own systems. Successful project-based learning hinges on a project idea which provides opportunities for creative problem solving. The project must set the learner's problems which are sufficiently open-ended for them to propose and test truly original ideas of their own. It is difficult to think of a school context that is better suited to this form of learning than physical computing. The interplay between designing and making physical objects, wiring and electrical circuits, and programming input-output systems creates almost limitless possibilities within simple, practical, and definable parameters. Physical computing has the added advantage of its appeal to young learners growing up in an increasingly technological world. An enduring characteristic of young learners is that their ideas are rarely limited by mundane things like time frame, budget, and what is practically possible. A session of ideation, during which a great deal of divergent thinking will have taken place, needs to be followed by a period of convergent thinking, during which the many and varied ideas proposed by learners are analyzed and evaluated. This creative problem-solving approach accords well with the commonly adopted method of problem-solving in computer science, known as computational thinking. Computational thinking involves the processes of decomposition, logic, pattern recognition, abstraction, and algorithm design. Ideation allows the learners to break down or decompose the problem in order to gain a better understanding of it. Convergent thinking will enable the learners to recognize patterns, to simplify and adopt alternative solutions, and to begin to plan the steps that they wish to take to provide their unique and creative solutions to the problem. The breakdown of Moore's law and the introduction of quantum computing will place unimaginable processing power at the disposal of the school children of today. So, the rationale for teaching about physical computing is clear. To enable computing systems of the future to solve problems for us, they need to understand our environment and to bring about changes in it. People will continue to play a role in the design, manufacture, and maintenance of the interfaces between the environment and the computing systems. 
Society will need people with knowledge and skills to perform these tasks, and the younger they begin to learn about physical computing, the more capable they will be. Future employment opportunities are a matter of fervent speculation. A career in the field of physical computing is likely to be as safe a choice as any. To learn more, head over to edX.org and search for project-based learning and enroll for free.